Hello and welcome to Battersea Power Station. In this video, we're going to learn about the history of the power station itself. Take a tour around and see what they've done with it today. And hopefully take a lift ride right at the top of one of these towers here. Battersea Power Station was a fully working coal-fired facility and at its peak produced a fifth of London's power, supplying over 400,000 kilowatts of electricity to some of London's most famous landmarks, such as the Houses of Parliament and Buckingham Palace. Located on the south bank of the River Thames in the London borough of Wandsworth at Nine Elms and Battersea, work began on the construction in 1929 with original plans drawn up by architect Sir Giles Gilbert Scott, who also designed Britain's red telephone boxes. It finally opened in 1935 as Power Station A, with only the western pair of chimneys that stand 103 metres from ground level. RAF pilots and the Luftwaffe would use the white vapour from the chimneys for navigation, which explains why the power station avoided massive bombing during the war. The second phase of the building, known as Battersea B, was completed in 1944, with its two further chimneys to the east completing a few years later. This made it the largest power station in the UK at the time. And so big, it's rumoured you can fit St Paul's Cathedral in the boiler house alone, and Nottingham city centre in its floor space. The power station comprised of three separate wings, with the boiler house in the centre and its four vast chimneys, Turbine Hall A to the west with its accompanying switch house, and the later Turbine Hall B to the east. The power station continued generating electricity until 1983, with only a few issues. On the launch night of BBC Two in 1964, an electrical failure caused a blackout across London, delaying the launch until the next morning. In 1980, the building was awarded Grade 2 listed status by Historic England, and it was so iconic it featured on the cover of the Pink Floyd album, Animals. It also featured in many blockbuster films such as Superman 3, The Children of Men, and Batman The Dark Knight. After its closure in 1983, the site was earmarked for demolition and to be sold for housing, but its listed status prevented this from happening and so the building sat abandoned for many years. Until in 1987, a consortium led by John Broom purchased the site as Battersea Leisure. He had a vision for the site that was unlike any other. John Broom at the time was the brainchild behind Alton Towers, turning it from a stately home and gardens into a fully-fledged theme park. He proposed turning the building and its surrounding land into one massive theme park resort. He wanted it to become London's own Epcot Centre, creating over 6,000 jobs. It boasted five floors of over 200 attractions, combining education and entertainment with other rides, leisure developments and restaurants accompanying the rest of the site. Work started in 1987. The building's roof was demolished in order for them to remove all the machinery from the inside. However, the discovery of asbestos the fact that the building had no actual foundations and rising costs associated with it, the project stalled. This left the building standing and open to the elements. The plan was eventually scrapped not long afterwards and he walked away from the project after already spending millions to secure it. This is a far more exciting and complicated story but we will save that for another video. The building saw many future schemes come and go with nothing coming to fruition until, in 2012, it was purchased by a consortium of Malaysian investors who planned to turn it into residential, commercial and leisure facilities. Work commenced in 2013 and a new Northern Line extension opened in 2021 called Battersea Power Station Station and the rest of the project opening its doors in September of 2022 featuring a mixed bag of different developments inside the power station and its surrounding land. What's inside I hear you ask? Well let's take a look round and see. Now it's only when you stand underneath it that you realise how high this building actually is. I mean you can see it pretty much anywhere off the bank in London. 
but it is absolutely massive. Well, let's head inside and check out what they've done with it today. As you can see today, it's a modern shopping center to accompany all the new residential buildings that have been built around the outside of it. The one thing I do like is they've kept all the original interiors, as you can see here, with the brickwork still exposed here and the original steelwork there for the supports on the building. So you've got the nice original walls still on display all the way around the front here. Now on display in the, one of the main halls is this original electrical switch gear. You can see down here they've restored it and left it right in the middle of the building, but it's not in its original place, so we're told. A fine bit of early 1930s engineering there. And I've got to say, I'd rather them use it as a shopping centre, even though it's not an original idea, than to do absolutely nothing with it. It was left derelict for many, many, many years and it nearly got knocked down quite a few times. So I'm glad that they're using it for something. So here we are in one of the halls, or Turbine Hall B, as it's called. So you've got Hall B here, you've got the central atrium, which we came in, and then there's Hall A on the other side. It's even still got the original crane in there. I do love this, how they've kept it and put the shops inside, but you can still see how the building looked and what was inside it. So here's a map of the building today. So this is Hall B, which we're in now, this section. That's the main atrium that we came inside. We came in here at the front door. And then on the left here, you've got the Hall A. So here we are on level three. And as you can see, we get an amazing view up here. And you've got the gantry crane just there. And there's another one just behind us over here. Nice again to see they've kept the original rails and the gantry cranes in situ. But you can see the, the three levels there, and I'm currently on the cinema level, so we've got a cinema in here. We'll just check that out. It is absolutely massive in here, but also amazing at the same time what they've done with it. Now, I am a bit scared of heights, so to stand up here, it's quite unnerving. But you can see how big it is, the hall. And right down there is what is now a bar called the Control Room B. And not forgetting this amazing new bar. Set up inside the restored control room B. All the old equipment is still inside. But unfortunately, the day I visited, it was hosting an event, so I was unable to take you inside. And also, control room A still exists as a private event space that can be booked. Here we are in Hall A, which has a different appearance to the other one. This has got a glass roof up there, and the walls are different. I think these were built in different time periods. You can see that when you come inside here, how different they look. But again, we've got the original gantry cranes still in situ up there.
So let's now head up inside one of the chimneys on the Battersea Power Station, right to the top, and see what views we can see from up there. So here we are at the top of Battersea Power Station. If you look down there, you can see they've built apartments on the top of the roof. And down there is Hall A and Hall B is on the other side. This is the central atrium here and you've got the two chimneys on the opposite side. And the other one opposite is right there. A great view around London here. And if you just look off in the distance there, and I'll zoom in for you, you can see one of our old friends over there and that is the Crystal Palace transmitter at Crystal Palace Park where we were before in a previous video series we're now looking over Battersea Park that is an upcoming series on the channel keep your eyes peeled for that Well, thank you very much for joining us here at Battersea Power Station. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.